I'm assuming being that you've been here so long, you would probably be pretty familiar with the history of the brewery itself. Are you able to speak to that, like how the brewery started and, and got to where it is? I can tell you everything. <clears throat> I can tell you that the color of the t-shirt the previous owner was wearing <laughs> when he started the brewery. No. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Are you a brewhead? I'm a brewhead. Y'all a brewheads? Yeah, we brewheads. So pour a glass of craft beer, we can do this. Yeah. What's good, y'all? This is Seek Certified Brewhead, and welcome to episode 158 of Beer Another Shit Podcast. This afternoon, we are in glorious Etobicoke, Ontario. Finally, at Great Lakes Brew, isn't it? It's glorious is Etobicoke, it yeah, it's beautiful. Right? <laughs> With Troy Birch, Marketing Comms. Mate, pleasure. Thanks finally. for coming, finally. Man, yeah. I know, right? I feel like we've uh, tried welcome to do this Welcome like to a... lovely Etobicoke. Isn't it? Gl- well, thank you. I'm happy to be glorious. here. Glorious. I'm going to use that for now. Thank glorious you Etobicoke. So I feel like it's like, glorious has become like a real favorite word of mine. I, it's I like a it. good name for a beer too, glorious. Cool. I wonder if you could be like a lactose. Uh, yeah, Definitely yeah, lactose. We don't do a lot of lactose, but we there maybe for that one. Maybe for that one, I feel like. I figured you would. I figured you would. Man, thank you so much for having us. It's fantastic to finally do this. Thanks for being here. Pleasure, pleasure. So we're going to chat a bunch of stuff today, but... Let's crack something first. We got to start with Canuck. Go, we got to do it. Canuck, the flagship uh, yes. brand for Great Lakes. Uh, you've had it, obviously. I before. have, but to be honest, it's been so long, and because I keep seeing people, like I'm not here enough to always drink it. So I'm actually looking forward to uh, sipping error again. Um, it's a thank you, sir. It's an American, yeah. It's an American uh, West Coast uh, pale ale. Pale ale. I always get caught with the IPA and pale ale in this one, but no, it's a, it's a straight up, straight up uh, pale ale. Um, we did this back in 2010 for uh, the Winter Olympics. It was called ah. Crazy Canuck. Uh, oh, that's when I had it. Okay. Yeah, we were one of the only breweries, four breweries from Ontario to send beer to BC for the Ontario Athletes Pavilion. Mill Street sent organic, Steam mm-hmm. Whistle sent Steam Whistle, Bose sent organic. We said, let's do something different, unique, something we've never done before. We did a 650 mil painted bottle, called it a Crazy Canuck. 2011, we brought it out in cans. Revamped it in 2014, and this is what we got. All right. Cheers. Love it. Cheers, brother. So it's a straight-up American Pale Ale. Nice. It's 280 at the LCBO, so it's it's one of the best-valued brands yeah. in the province. 5.2. Uh, 5.2%. And it's, uh, it's got a lot of Simcoe in it. It's got Centennial and Chinook. Uh, it is... Uh, Goes through the centrifuge, so I know a lot of people like the haze, but we like yeah, to keep it authentically uh, West Coast. Is this like chill haze? That would be of? chill, yeah, chill from haze. yeah, chill haze. Um, so it's just Simcoe? Chinook and, Chin- and Centennial. Chinook, I'm sorry. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Simcoe is the, the predominant hop the in one this beer, yeah. Nice, man. It hey. gives it some of that piney um, pine finish. This type of thing. Yeah. But it's not over the top, super bad. It's not over the top. This is what uh, we refer to at the brewery, like, if you were to go to get blood, any person in the brewery, if they were going to get blood, the first thing the nurse would pull out is a, is a pint of Canuck. Right. Just because we drink it. Everyone drinks it. It's the beer of choice for all the staff. So, right. Um, it's just easy, accessible, uh, flavorful, delicious, and, uh, and it's can- Canadian, right? So, right. Yeah. Interesting. So is it is it different to the original? Because I certainly had. I don't think I've had it well, since. It's evolved. It's, it's evolved, evolved okay. since 2010. Uh, our hop billing yeah. process, uh, or our hop build process, has bit. changed. But the biggest thing that's changed in the beer um, would be the scheduling of the hop. Okay. So like we do a lot of hop uh, post boil and then actually insert the secondary. So a lot of the beer uh, or a lot of the hop profile you're getting is all secondary, right. flavor, aroma, um, and uh, dryness. Okay. So finish is nice and dry, which is great at bars. Great yeah. at home. Yeah. No, keep, this is... keep keep tipping her back. I love it. Um, how did you get into beer specifically? What's your story? It's a really long story. So we if we have like three hours, no. It's, uh, <laughs> when uh, it starts way back when I was in grade six, it actually okay. does. Oh, it does. Um, <laughs> my uh, my mom and dad got divorced. Sob, sob story. She met another fella. Uh, who happened to own a sanitation business, so okay. roadside garbage collection and recycles. Um, so I was in grade six, in the, the summer of grade six, I was working on the back of a garbage truck, which nice. by labor laws really? today would not say. happen. <laughs> I was making like, $5 cash an hour. That's amazing. Um, yeah, so... Oh, you're like 11? I was, uh, that would have been uh, 12, yeah, 12 or 13. Hanging on to the back. Hanging on to the back of a garbage truck, going oh down gosh. country roads, picking up garbage and recycling. What town was this? This was a, I come from a place called Brecken, Brecken. which is near Beaverton, Aurelia. So I was picking oh, really? up okay. curbside garbage in uh, Beaverton, Woodville, Uxbridge. Not as far as Uxbridge, no, sorry, and uh, Cannington. 
So we're picking up all the recyclables. We're finding all these old bottles, like Chimay and uh, some Polish uh, beers that you know I'd never seen before because my family, all old farmers, uh, they would oh. drink about 50. That's 50 through and through, 50. Uh, then that's all the bad. friends uh, of theirs would have Coors or Molson, and that's kind of the beers that I grew up with. Right. Uh, so grade 6 comes along, I'm finding all these bottles, I start collecting them. Don't think anything of it. I get to college and uh, student council president, we own the bar. So I'm allowed to go in and order some beer and uh, this company comes in brand new called Steam Whistle. And when they walk in, they're like, we have something so unique, so different than any other beer you've had. Crack open, and it's like, I actually like this beer. There's right. something to it. Grassy notes, lemony characteristics. And I got hooked. Moved to uh, Nova Scotia after my college uh, life policing and uh, started working for Labatt oh, right. and in the first two weeks they taught me a lot about beer and I said right at that moment there's got to be more to what I'm drinking right. if they're teaching me all this so befriended Garrison Propeller I told you it was a long story it's, hey I love this <laughs> uh, befriended Garrison Propeller and the granite that was out there and uh, started writing a blog called the Great Canadian Pubs and Beer Blog, right. which really took off of back in 2000 and, uh, 2007, 2008. You were an OG. There is, yeah, there is not much out there. There yeah. was uh, Al McLeod from, uh, I don't even, a good beer blog, I think. There was Stephen Beaumont. Oh, he's like, uh, around he's the, okay. he's the, uh, go- is he the one? yeah, is he's the main, like, Stephen Beaumont was, uh, like, yeah, he was writing books on beer back in the 90s. And, uh, oh, wow. Um, All right. So there was a, Greg Clow. Um, there was a handful of us doing the, the beer blogging. And Taps Magazine was starting up, and they said, do you want to come write about beer? I moved back from Halifax, and uh, I got a job writing about beer on the side. I right. uh, gave up my uh, career in uh, government, went to work for uh, the magazine and the media company in 2012, Did started Beer Week in 2010. Beer Week is? Toronto Beer Week. Okay. Yeah. You worked for them, too? I started that with a bunch of friends. It. Yeah, it was, uh, we, uh, we started in 2010 on the way back from a trip to Chicago Craft Brewers Conference. Had a bunch of beers and said it's time to do this, and uh, we got to work. And no, and it's still going uh, on now. It's we sold it a couple years ago to um, to St. Joseph's Media, Toronto Life People. So they've run it for the last two years, and that uh, is amazing. Yeah, I had no idea. Yeah, Jeez, we did it out of love and in passion, and uh, there was ten of us that four of us that started it, ten of us that grew it, and uh, it was literally just something like a hobby. We wanted to get the Toronto beer scene on an international scale. Right. We wanted people to really fall in love with the men and women brewing the beer and selling the beer. So that's what the whole ethos that is was. Awesome. And then in 2012, I joined Grey Lakes as a sales rep. And uh, uh, there's three breweries in the province I wanted to work for if I ever was to go straight to a brewery. And mm-hmm. it was Bose, Muskoka, Great Lakes. And uh, I love the guys at Great Lakes. And here I am seven and a half years later. That's amazing. Yeah. I had no idea that, uh, first of all, you were that deep in the game, and two, that you were in, uh, on the other side of the, uh, the world. So that, That's it, how I got started, yeah. It's kind of perfect for like the marketing and communications person to ha- have a direct understanding of being on the other side, writing about beer, so you can actually relate to the people that you're probably telling the Great Lakes story to. Right away, I understood the ask for freebies uh, side <laughs> of things. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. It's all about freebie. Um, freebie. <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it did... It did come into, like, I got hired here as a sales rep, first and foremost. I took over the social media uh, in 2000, early 2013, I would say, 100%. We had someone else doing it at that point. And I immediately set out to have a a two-way conversation um, with people, start over brand new, get rid of all of our followers, get rid of the people we were following, and just completely overhaul our whole uh, Mm -hmm. communications um, strategy, if you will, which... Never did exist. So. Right. That's really cool, man. Um, and you, I guess, yeah, you've controlled it ever since then. Um, has that been a, a, like a natural progress for you being on that side? Like you being able to communicate, being a writer and sort of like moving into that kind of just was a... I think it was a, a natural, fit, right? yeah, it was a natural <clears throat> progression. But I think from a unique point of view here at Grey Lakes is I got to do a bunch of different things. So I got to understand how the brewery worked. I got to understand how the owner worked. Right. I got to understand how our accounts, bars and restaurants, and, and consumers, how they behaved and how they shared a love of what we do and how we could then emulate that on our social channels. Um, so it was a little bit of learning on the job, but taking the background. And my background's in policing. It's not, right. in, it's not in writing or anything. You're the enemy. But it's the, it was the heart. It was the right. love of beer that led to the writing and, 
it was just open and honest writing about beer and uh, right and then people can relate to that because it's it's personal it, it tugs at the heartstrings it's yeah, talking yeah. about beer in a in a romantic yet uh non-scientific way hmm. and that i guess that background in writing helped you sort of move into that sort of the comms side of it and be able to market the beers because you could or you were already talking like that yeah and and to be here this long too you start <laughs> to develop um this is what worked last time and this is what didn't this is what we could do next time well we got to do this glorious so I, you know take a name like that and start <laughs> thinking what could we do on the label what could we write about on the back of the label and all, all of our labels at gray lakes uh they come from different people within the brewery so okay. mike lackey our brewer uh a brewing operations manager who is responsible for 90% of the creations that we're known for, uh, he has done a lot of the write-ups and he's come up with right. the brand. And uh, um, So we all play a little part, but uh, having that background really helps in understanding the process and then how to, how to share it to the community. Right, and translate that message yeah. to people. That's dope, man. Um, what's, I don't know, I'm assuming being that you've been here so long, you would probably be pretty familiar with the history of the brewery itself. Are you able to speak to that, like how the brewery started and got to where it is? I can tell you everything. <clears throat> I can tell you that the color of the t-shirt the previous owner was wearing <laughs> when he started the brewery. Um, it's a really cool story that not a lot of people know about. Um, <clears throat> what do you know about the brewery? Do you know how we got started? Not at all. No, to be no, honest, a I lot don't of people don't. A ton, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people think Great Lakes started around 2010. They have no idea we're this old. Uh, it's our, I was 30 years old. 30 yeah, we're second. 32. We're, we're moving into the 33rd year. I remember year. you did yeah. all the series of beers a couple did, years yeah. ago. With all the, 2017 the was our 30th anniversary. Yes. We did a big, uh, our 45-minute documentary. Um, it's, uh, it's available on YouTube, Vimeo, our website, all over the place for free. Mm -hmm. um, but no, the brewery got started in Brampton in a little tiny strip mall, uh, an industrial unit out in Brampton. 87, though. 155 Clark. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there was five guys, they were all home brewers, uh, and the goal was to have a brewery, five guys, one person would have a brewery of their own around the Great Lakes. So they wanted to expand to have five breweries. They started in 87, by 1990 they were running into some financial issues, and sold it to Peter Bullitt Sr., mm -hmm. who moved the brewery in 91, 92 to the present day location here in Etobicoke. Okay. And the one condition when he was buying the brewery was, brewer, you're coming with me. Right. So maintenance guy, mm -hmm. mechanic, brewer, you were coming with Stay me. Uh, yeah. His name is Bruce Cornish, and up until last year, he was here every day. He just retired. Um, right. He's living the good life out in Barry or something like that. But Holy that's God. how the brewery got started. And the interesting fact about the, the birth of Grey Lakes was they were a malt extract brewery. So you never hear that anymore. But they well, started okay. their beer so as malt bashing. extract. They right. Were not, you know, uh, is when it is not common. What no. Was it coming back then? Coming back, I'm not sure about the other breweries. I think some others did, okay. uh, but they were bottling their stuff in uh, one liter green PET bottles too. No way. So it was like a it was like a Got homebrew shop on homebrew. a little bit of steroids. Hmm. Um, and then they moved here in ninety one, ninety two, and the first decision that Peter Senior made was get rid of the, the green the, bottles. Yeah, we're going to go all grain, and we're going to bring in a professional brewer. We're going to develop the recipe again. We're going to get rid of your other beers, and we're going to focus on one beer. It's kind of sound like the start of Steam Whistle, but uh, we're going to just do one beer, and it's going to be called Great Lakes Lager. And that's all it was? Just that's what they did until 1994. And there was one beer the whole just time? Just one beer, and it was only available in draft. Yep. Uh, sold to bars and restaurants. There was no retail store until the year 2000. Wow. Um, 94, 95, they introduced Red Leaf Lager. Um, is it still around? That's still around. And <clears throat> the Great Lakes Lager is now called Blonde Lager. Uh, okay. And it went through some name changes and designs over the years. In 2000, they renamed it Golden Horseshoe Premium Lager. Oh. And that beer is across Ontario bars and restaurants. Oh, right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. And it's just our very easy drinking. We like to call it like the lawnmower fishing beer. It's, uh, be, it's just yeah, a very that's... easy drinking blonde lager. Right. That's crazy. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. We have a, it's a unique story. A lot of stories around the creation of a brewery. You know, father, son, doing some home brewing this, home brewing that. But we had success, failure, success, failure, and then, a roller coaster. Yeah, a roller coaster, yeah. Okay. And here we are today. And so the gentleman we met earlier, um, Peter he, Bullitt, he yeah. was the one that. Was, so he he's the gone. son of Peter Senior. Um, oh, I see. Yeah. So he took over. He took over. That's Peter Senior, cool. yeah. Peter Senior died in 2009. Oh no. And uh, uh, at that time, uh, Peter took over the brewery. Um, 
kept it Increased going. Increased marketing, uh, introduced new brands, um, put a focus on the retail uh, store here at the brewery. Right. Like I said, there was no retail here until the year 2000. Okay. It's crazy. The brewery was here. They could have had a retail store. They didn't do it. I don't know why. I guess um, it just wasn't even a thing back then. But you see places mm. like Cremor and Amsterdam, they had they successful had retail, retail store. stores, right? right. So right. I guess it just never... I just mean, never dawned on figured them. it out. I think I was just thinking as you were sort of saying all this when uh, when this we started out like the stupid photos with the, the beer review stuff that was 2011. Scott and I this is one of the first places yeah. breweries I ever went to long before the podcast stuff. And uh, I remember that we had the just dropped like the Miami Weiss at yeah. the time. Yeah. And which I was like, yo, this is like this brand new <laughs> sick. And the tap that you did have a retail store, I guess, in 2011, yeah. Yeah. but it looked completely different. Oh, it was way different to what it is now. Yeah. And like everything was in bottles and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then now you've clearly moved on. You got the specialty stuff in bottles and everything's canned. We have like four different style or four different uh, series now. We have our core brands, we okay. have our Tank 10 series, yes. we have seven barrel series. And then we don't call it Project X anymore. We don't have that series, but. It's brands like that. the Seven uh, Barrels Bottle Condition Series. Right, right. And so we have a plethora of those coming in and out throughout the year. And they're beers that we brewed, put in barrels, aged. Um, some of them don't go in barrels. Some of them go in other fermenters. And then we take them out, bottle them, add some extra uh, priming sugar and some yeast, and let them ferment for another six to eight weeks. That's dope. And then put them in the fridge. And we started doing that just at the start of 2019. Okay, so it's still pretty new. So, yeah, so I feel like, yeah, you guys are definitely, like, because you're OGs, I had in my mind that maybe, I mean, we had, I had the Electric Circus just yeah. before, fantastic, hazy pale ale, mango pineapple, and pineapple, yeah. it was juicy, it was chalky, it was everything I would like in a, like a 5% of mm-hmm. pale ale, it's perfect. Um, and I was kind of shocked that it was, because I'd had the, when I saw you last, I think it was like November, I was here and I got the yeah. octopus, I came here specifically Octopons to get the New England Yeah, version. yeah, yeah. Um, so I was like excited to see you guys do that. That was a great deal. I really enjoyed that. And then this was like, oh shit, you guys are like doing some serious stuff. And now I feel like you guys have changed. Is that accurate to say? Yeah, I, sort of, uh, yep. Yeah. The chain, even something like this now. The, yeah, for the sure. So and, I think, and this is, we have a term around here that we say humbly arrogant, that we know where we stand in the industry. When Canuck came out in 2010, it was a game changing beer in the industry. Yeah. It's a West Coast pale ale that was readily accessible. Others were doing it. But we, we put the style kind of out there. Um, and then we started brewing beers on the side, like Karma Citra, um, Trust and IPA, um, Robohop. Robohop. Robohop, yeah. And we did a whole bunch of My Bitter Wife, and we did beers like that. They really screen. gained a huge traction, like yeah. you said, uh, Miami Vice. Um, and then but we the, invest... for the branding, too, on top of that. Oh, everything itself. changed, like, it was yeah. Just really yeah. Cool. Everything changed. The branding changed in 2012. Okay. We started working with Fabian Skidmore, who's the manager of uh, The Only Cafe, um, oh, long time. Our... Yeah, he does all of our graphic art here. He's our art director. Um, so yeah, we, we've adapted. And I think that's the, the, one of the core strengths of what we can do here is we don't, we don't really do the trend thing, but we'll try to be a little bit ahead. If we're not there, then we come out, we take our time and we look at, we don't want to just want to brew a haze bomb or, or a lactose or um, an imperial whatever. We want to take the time to perfect it before we do it. I love it. Was there anything else? I'm just conscious of time. Like, I know we're at, like, 4 o'clock. Yeah. Are we pretty good? Yeah, we're good. Anything else we need to tell the people? What do they need to know? Um, coming up in December, Hops for Hunger. Uh, yes, tell us about that. Uh, we partner up with the Daily Bread Food Bank every year. Uh, last year was our 10th anniversary of doing that. We donate a lot of money to Daily Bread Food Bank. Um, last year, we grew brewed a beer excuse me brewed a beer for them people can come buy the beer in December the whole month oh, yeah. um, proceeds go to the Daily Bread Food Bank we take our team down and we sort food it's one of the best things it's one of the most rewarding things that I do in my job right. and every every December we work with them That's and cool. it's a and it's an organization here in Etobicoke that needs love and support from everyone in the city um, you can donate you can uh, donate your time. You can um, you can come and help us at Great Lakes. Go down and sort food. So we just we love getting involved in local community endeavors and supporting all the friends and neighbors that support us. I love that. I think it's really important, and it's cool that you guys are uh, after being around for so long that you just really like showing love and just making sure that 
the community groups are taken care of and that are acknowledged and respected? Well, you're only as strong as your community. If your community, you know, so we we love our neighbors. They love us. Um, everyone's happy, and it's rewarding at the end of the day to know we sell beer and we can then contribute that back to our neighbors. So. Hell yeah, man! So this is going to come out next week. Is there any beers in the in the say the coming month or so after that that people should be aware of that you want them to make sure we come through to the the brew pub here in the Keep an eye out for Devils wants to Devils wants to fight Octopus. Wants Devils. To fight. Octopus. Devils Pale Ale six six six. It's returning for Halloween. Oh shit! The OG. Yes. Yeah, the OG. Yes. Yeah. It always makes an appearance around this uh, right end of October. Okay. Uh, Lake Effect IPA. Our big American bold and bitter IPA will be coming back out. Uh, end of November to December in our winter ale, but we have a few tricks and a few new beers in our upper sleeves that are coming out. I love that. I saw Which the I can't tell you about, but follow us on Instagram and we'll... Where at? At Great Lakes Beer, across the platforms. Across platforms. everywhere. You see that consistency? That's what it's about. Randy. We tell you guys, Randy, it's really some fucking Troy right here. Also, I saw you had the pumpkin beer out right now. Yeah. Are you, are you team pumpkin? I'll tell you right now, man. I drink about three or four of them a year. And? I like it. Are you team I like the Saison to pump better, but we don't have it this year. We're not brewing it. It's a great beer. But I'll tell you one thing. We get asked all the time, how come you guys focus so much energy on this one beer? It's because we sell a shit ton of it. And people love it. The mans love it because people are team pumpkin. Are you team lactose? I am team everything except Michelob Ultra. Michelob Balcher, you got like five shout outs in this thing. You really did. Like, I mean, we really (laughs) wasn't intentional at all. And it's really funny that we were talking to this producer right now who loves Michelob Ultra. And I'm talking to him all the time about, what the fuck are you drinking, bro? Like, you understand where you live, fam. Go drink some good beer. Um, Troy, dude, you're a legend, man. Thank thank you so much. much. Thanks for coming. Awesome. Um, Anytime. So people can find it at Great Lakes Beer and it's greatlakesbeer.com or greatlakesbeer.com. And then every social platform is at Great Lakes Beer. I don't know what to say, like, from our agency side, that is literally the exact uh, <laughs> strategy that you need to have across the board. So listen to this fucking guy. Guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the episode, mate, smash the thumbs up. Hit subscribe below. Hit the notification bell so you know when the new stuff drops. Follow us on social media at BOS Podcast everywhere, online, and every social media. And uh, check out the long-form audio. Drink Spotify. your beer fresh. Drink it fresh. Don't age it. I've been doing that lately. It's problematic. Don't do it. Follow us on uh, fucking whatever, the podcast, so you can hear very attractive gentlemen like Uncle Troy talking about craft beer. That is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching and listening. We'll see you in the next episode. Get in ya. I don't have anything to choose. <laughs>